at a young age. You're listening to LGBT stories during one of our hiatus months. What that means is that we are resting and we're prepping for the new year ahead. There won't be any new episodes of LGBT stories from December throughout all of January, but that does leave room for us to share some of our best of or our favorite episodes from LGBT stories. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope that if you haven't heard these episodes yet, that you find them just as moving as we did so many years ago. And if you've listened to the show from the very beginning, I hope that these episodes bring you back to the good old days. I hope that all your holidays are going great, and I can't wait till you see what we have lined up for next year. Enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming back and joining us. We are in the middle of our best of series here at LGBT Stories. Every December and January, we are taking a bit of a hiatus where we stop making new episodes and we put out some of the best episodes that have been the most inspiring and the most moving of this entire show. So, Today we do have a wonderful episode, but there are a few things I want to tackle really quickly. I'll try and make this real quick. Um, If you don't know, every single month, LGBT Stories makes a donation uh, that comes from all of the profits. We donate um, 5% of all profits from our merchandise sales to a nonprofit organization that specifically um, supports different LGBTQ, um, you know, organizations and things like that. So the way we do this is we want this to be an inclusive um, project that we do every month where you guys, the listeners, have an opportunity to take part in making some, you know, decisions around here. And so if you are part of the poll in uh, our Facebook group, we have a private Facebook group, then um, you know about this. But basically, every month, I try and do this as early in the month as possible. I put up a poll in that group, and I list two different organizations that we can vote on as a community to donate profits to. And this month, um, we had two options. One was an organization called GLSEN, and another one was an organization called PFLAG. And the winner for the most amount of votes from the community to get the donation um, this month for December is Glisten, And I'm really excited about this because I really believe in what they do. And, um, you know, I did get to cast a vote and my vote went to Glisten. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what the rest of the people who made um, who voted on this as well. So just a little bit about them. It says on their website, Glisten which is spelled G-L-S-E-N and pronounced GLSEN, is a leading national education organization that works with um, uh, grades K through 12 in schools uh, to help uh, make them safe and affirming environments and ensure that LGBTQ students are able to learn and grow in a school environment free from bullying and harassment It says that 8 out of 10 LGBT students are still harassed at school each year because of who they are, but GLSEN is working to change that through researching and developing evidence-based solutions and providing resources for education to use in their school communities. That's something I got right off of their website. Um, It's www.glsen.org. So here's the thing. If you go to our lgbtstories.com, and you click on shop at the top or in the menu button, um, you'll be able to purchase merchandise from us. And what we do is we take 5% of every sale that we make and we donate it at the end of the month to Glisten this month. So thank you guys for taking part of that in that. And um, thank you for just being an active community. I also want to say um, a big thank you to everyone who donated to LGBT Stories. Um, this month so far and on Giving Tuesday. I'm really grateful for the donations that we received. If you want to donate to LGBT Stories, it's really simple. 
you just go to our website, ourlgbtstories.com, and click on Donate at the top. If you're on your phone or a mobile device, just click the three bars and you'll see Donate. And then all of that is administered through PayPal. I don't get any of your information. You can make a one-time donation. You can make a reoccurring donation. I had someone make a $5 reoccurring donation. That's going to be um, every month they're donating that. That's really huge because although it's $5, um, you guys don't realize like, we pay every month for our email services. We pay every month for our website. We pay every month to host this show um, so that you guys can actually listen to it. We pay every month for um, Creative Cloud, which we do our editing in Adobe. So every, you know, these things really add up and they really help. And quite frankly, you know, it's $5 a month for uh, the email account. So Thank you to that person who donated that because you're really making us um, accessible to people who are emailing us and the people that need our help. So thank you guys. If you want to do that, head over to ourlgbtstories.com and click donate at the top or in the menu um, section there on the website and make a donation. It really does help. Um, anything helps. One dollar, a hundred dollars. We've gotten two hundred and fifty dollar donations before, and they've been just so magical, and I'm so appreciative. So. Without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. On January 5th, 2017, I released an episode of LGBT stories called Gay in Uganda. A gentleman named Ronnie Magusha from Kampala, Uganda, told a terrifying and deeply emotional story of coming out at a young age and the horrific acts of violence that followed him for the remainder of his life as a direct result. I could not do a best of series and not replay Ronnie's story. As I sat today and I listened to his story again, it's been years since we recorded it, and I was instantly reminded of why I had been in tears while listening to him speak so many years ago. Here I was, this guy who was living in America producing this podcast as freely as ever. Meanwhile, this man across the sea was fighting to stay alive at such a young age. He fears that he lost his mother as a result of his coming out, and you'll hear more about that in his story. And he can't find a way to sustain himself daily. The difference could not be more glaring and in my face. So yes, today's episode is emotional. It comes during a time when the Ugandan government is currently working to pass a national law that would once again make it um, able to be punished by death for just being gay. This episode was originally aired in 2017 Today, it's the end of 2019, and sadly, not much has changed for Uganda. I hope that you learn something from humanity today through this episode. It is my prayer that somehow, someone listening who needs a reason to feel compassion and love for the LGBTQ community will find that through Ronnie's story, because it's our stories that change people and change lives. Enjoy. Um, I'm Ronnie Mugisha, Ugandan gay refugee in Nairobi, Kenya. I was born in, I was born on 9th October 1992. And I grew up with, most of my times I used to live with my mom grew up with my mom, stayed with my mom. Um, as I grew up, my mom was like, used to buy for me dresses. So she, she used to take me as a daughter. So I grew up with a lot of girls surrounding me. I was the only boy, so I grew up doing girl thing. And my mom used to call me, my girl, my girl, my girl. So I grew up in that way. So as I continued, the age, like at the age of 10, my uncle started beating me because of putting on dresses. Cars were like, please, you're a man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't 
be putting on such clothing. But my mom supported me. I was like, oh, you can put on whatever you feel. You can put on whatever you want. Let them just talk. I'm there to support you. So I kept on like that. I kept on like that. Then in school, uh, I started discovering myself when I joined, when I was in primary, primary six, primary seven, because we used to go, a lot of us, in, a, in the bathroom, and we put up clothing, we start bathing, so I could find myself admiring my fellow students, my fellow pupils, the ones I studied with. So I found it was so abnormal because people never believed in it and everyone was against it. So as I joined secondary level, I found people were like, everyone was like against it and the fact I was in a single school, so people like those older students used to work. They could go in the bathroom, they could go in the dorm train, they wank. So at times I could get like confused because the feelings I had, whenever I could see a boy, my I would they would turn me on. The ones I like would turn me on. And the feelings I had were like really for boys. I've never had girls' feelings. So I went on, I went on in school, I went on, then the fact it was a, a single school, the, the, there are some guys who got interested in me and they started dat dating me. That was Form 3. Then in Form 4, in Form 4, there is a, a teacher of mine who also tried to date me, but the way he came in, well, you wouldn't understand. Okay, just to first took him as my close friend, but still, the way he was telling me, actually, I got confused and I couldn't understand him. So it was a whole day. I went back home and my mom called me, was like, Ronnie, I would love to speak to you. So I gave her time and she asked me whether I have ever had feelings for girls. Then I was like, mom, that's so strange. And why are you asking me? And she was like, no, I'm your mom. I would love to know. I was like, okay. I've never been there and I feel uh, I um, I have those feelings for girls. So she was like, have you ever seen a girl and you feel you, you a hard on or your, your, your dick erects? And I, I found whatever she was asking me was so strange for me to answer. It took me, it gave me hard time to answer her, but she kept on insisting. Then I told her the truth because I'd never had, feelings for girls and she was like okay if you see your fellow boys can you get a hard on do you get feelings for them i was like yeah some of them attract me then she was like which means you're gay i was like i don't know it means you're gay because you don't have feelings for your fellow but for your for girls you have feelings for your fellow boys, it means you're, uh, you're gay. If you have, if you get attracted to your fellow boys, we call that gay. But what you have to know, people don't understand that and people would never accept that. But me, I don't have any problem with you, but what you have to do is take care of yourself and you have to know that even, even if it's gay life, there are diseases, you'll find such diseases, but for me, I will be there for you. Anything, any problem, any question, you can contact me, me, I will be there for you, but never take it publicly because you get killed, people will attack you, and I myself will be attacked too because that is a, that is a taboo in a community, and whenever they know, they will slaughter your head. So just be careful, know that I know it, and you know it yourself, be careful. I so she begged me a lot, and I felt like okay, have a caring mom. Uh, then went back to school. That was early early two thousand nine. Yeah, in first term, my teacher 
my teacher kept on kept on insisting on me so we started dating she he reached a time of buying me a phone and phones were never allowed to school but she told me can just keep it we can text from there if i want to talk to you if i want to beat you we can always text on that phone now i was like okay so the phone at times you could send me pawns at times you could send me love messages calls so i actually had good time with the phone so one time a friend of mine was like i i assist him with my phone he wanted to call his parents back so i gave him the phone and when he was behind the dormitory calling the disciplinary the the teacher who was responsible for boys came in and got him behind the dormitory with a phone because the phones were not allowed in at school it had to be confiscated then the phone was taken so i i don't know what happened i think they reached in the office and checked the phone they found the text messages and they asked the guy is this phone yours he was like no it's ronnie's phone so they asked me who gave you the phone they called my dad my dad was like no i've never given him a phone then they were, they asked me who gave you the phone and we see the names of this teacher is texting you is doing what how do you connect i was like i was like it's just my friend but i don't know anything about those texts i don't know anything about those texts and they were like but the phone is yours so you're practicing homosexuality in school oh is so they asked me a lot of questions i couldn't even answer they were rude to me so what they had to do they were like this is so confusing it's confusing us because they called the teacher the teacher was like no ron is free ron has you should not blame him he has done nothing so leave him alone so they had to suspend me for two weeks from school mm, i didn't tell the truth to my dad to the reason to why i've been suspended though the document was showing that i've been suspended because of bad behaviors from school so he never knew which behaviors then i had to tell my mom because my mom was working and he was she was very busy she couldn't escort me back to school so i had to go back with my with my dad so we reached there in when my dad was told that what was found in the phone the text messages the pawns he couldn't he couldn't believe it because he trusted in me so much so he couldn't believe that i'm the one who has been caught in gay acts so he never believed and the fact that i wasn't caught ready handed they just got the phone and the phone the text i kept on saying no i'm not the one i don't know so i was like i couldn't accept so they were like but it's real they had to they had to expel the teacher then what they did because my dad didn't believe it they decided he was like i'm giving you a second chance they decided to punish me they called the school assembly they gave me 12 strokes of canes then they told everyone to to move away from me because I'm an evil person they were like is we are allowing him back in school but please please be careful about him is an evil person he'll end up spoiling you and actually some of them were were warned not to to want to work with me or to talk with me those who are my close friends so I kept in school but I uh, by that time I was so careful people were neglecting me people abused me every sort of abuses so I faced a lot that time I couldn't even study well because every time I was scared I was getting worried so what I did I moved on then I had to leave that school after the year I went in 
advanced level that is form five and form six to another school where I reached and I was being called, then they were asking me why I'm behaving like a girl just from nowhere because I didn't talk to anyone. I just didn't I was just myself doing what I feel, what I am. But they were punishing me that I should be I should be walking like a man. Just because I walk the way I, I am, the way I feel, they would call me and punish me, telling me walk like a man. At times I would put on clothing, then they tell me, put them off. These are not men's clothing. So I found um, I was studying in a life that I couldn't enjoy. My life was always under pressure. I found I never enjoyed anything. So I finished schooling. I finished my advanced level. Uh, then in my vacation, was there I kept on then my mom kept warning me warning my mom reached a time where he told my dad because my dad was rude on me since the time he started suspecting me from school came rude on me could abuse me sorts of words so it that because it was a polygamous family my mom and my dad didn't understand each other so they had they had to to separate they had to separate my dad had to to go to another wife so what happened it separated because of me being gay and my mom was supporting me so my dad was like he can never live with a wife who supports evil who supports satanic things who supports taboo can never my dad was like he's my child my mom was like he's my child i can't i can't just you know, like the way you want to do so unfortunately that same year my mom passed away from nowhere i don't know the reason i just don't know the reason to why he passed away i don't know because she was never sick she was never sick she was she was just there okay okay but everyone was against her because of me because of me being a, because she supported man people had started sus- suspecting it cuz my step mom could go everywhere after mom after my mom was open to my dad and told my dad that Ron is gay you have to give him peace that is his life you don't need to harass him you don't need to punish him that is his life so my dad went and shared with my step mom then my step mom went around everywhere telling everyone so after my mom everyone was against my mom everyone was abusing my mom so what happened my mom died they suspect i don't know whether but i suspect she was killed because she was very okay she was not sick she never had like any problem just from nowhere from nowhere we had supper and and in the morning we found she's dead in her room so we are all confused we don't know actually everyone was like she's killed she's killed and they are the same people who are against her because of me so immediately after her death i found nowhere to go i found nowhere to go they chased me from home then my I, i i went to i left my mom's press i went to my step mother's press where my dad was living. my step mama step mother did every thought everything she reached a time of giving going to church giving a testimony about me how i'm gay how i'm a devil worshiper how i'm uh, i'm being driven by the devil how they can't live with a devil worshiper because gay people deal with with illuminati so they did a lot of things you could support people to attack me in the, on the way to beat me then my my dad said, my dad stopped paying my tuition because my mom is the one who was paying my tuition 
Then after her death, my dad was like, I can't pay for someone who is a devil worshiper, for someone who is a gay, so I can't pay. And I can't do anything, and I can never do that, because I'm a religious person, and I can never do it. So things started worsening on my side, I never had anything big to do, so I was like getting confused. I have nowhere to go. I started meeting new gay friends, but when I could meet them still, some of them were like after sex, we sleep together because I was fearing going back home. I couldn't go back home. Whenever I was home, I wasn't comfortable because they would be harassing me, they would be torturing me, they would be abusing me, they would give me punishments. At times they would not even give me food because of my sexuality. So I found I don't have any peace at home. I'm living under pressure at home. They are over abusing me. They don't want me to touch on people. They don't want me to reach on someone. So I... Uh, I just le- lived like that life. So I had a, a, a man, kind of a old, old man, whom I have taken long dating on Facebook. So he was, he had got an appointment in our place. He had got an, yeah, he was an engineer. So he got a contract in our place. He came, he, would, he told me I'll be there. I'll be sleeping at Pelican Hotel. So we can do what? We can always meet at the hotel. So, because I was tired of home and I never had anywhere to go, so I was like, oh, okay, at least now I can spend some days at the hotel. So I went to the hotel, I could meet her, I could meet the man who could be there, but the, 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 the lady at the reception, I never knew her, was looking at me in the way, so the man was like, do you know her? I was like, no, I don't know her, I just leave him. Because for the man, he never cared a lot. So he could go, but the lady kept on following us. So the time for a man to go back reached. The time he was leaving was it was in the morning. So from upstairs going down, I was escorting the man outside the hotel. He was leaving, going back to Kampala. I met my dad at the reception. Uh, that was seated at the reception of the hotel. I don't know how he came. I don't know what brought him there, but I met him there. He said hi. He never replied me. He moved on, moved out. So I never knew that the lady at the reception was a friend to my dad. So he told him whatever was taking place, the Tauka could enter. So it was worse. Me, I, I left because after that, the guy went back to Kampala. Then I had to go back home because I had nowhere to go. So when to reach home in the evening, because I spent some time in town, then I had to go back home. I loved going back in the evening because I would reach going back to my bed. I, I never wanted to interact with anyone. If they would be abusing me, harassing me. In the evening, decided to go home. Before I reached home, I met the the psycho guys. They wanted, like, they called me, they busy. you homosexual, what are you doing here? You you will kill you, you will say it, and you'll say, we'll ban you. So I got scared, but I kept on walking. I reached, when I reached at the gate, I saw there are a lot of people home. There, is a, there was a gathering home, a lot of people. So what I, I thought, has, is, has anything happened at home? Because I never knew what was going on. So entering the gate, everyone was on me. They poured water on me. They bit me. They slapped me. You, we are killing you now. You would not live. You would not live. We've given you time, but we are tired. Stop shaming us. It was they harassed me. They abused me. They pissed me. They punished me. So I was like, oh, my God. 
this, there was a friend of mine who was like, I entered into the hub. He got confused. I couldn't even give the way to take me out. I was just there. I was knowing that that's my last day. A friend of mine was like, Ronnie, if you have knowledge, you should run away from here because these people, serious, they are going to kill you. Your stepmom has no right. The whole thing, everyone is here. They're just waiting for your dad to kill you. But some are suggesting they take you to the police. And when they take the police, they will ban you. So I got scared. I, I got of course, my stepmom called everyone, my relatives, everyone. I, I had nowhere to run to. But the good thing, I had a laptop. It was at my friend. My That friend at home was like, run, I went through the back gate, the backward gate, the behind gate. Run. Take shortcuts, go. So that's what I did. I ran away. I went to my friend's place. I said I need to. I told him all the what's happening, but he already knew because I had told him what was happening. So what? What he did he was like, I can give you some small money from the laptop for the laptop, and he gave me some money. I got um. I get. I boarded the bus to Kampala. I reached in Kampala. My, then I called my cousin. My, when I reached at my cousin's press, my cousin was like, no, Ronnie, I can't host you because everyone now knows that you're gay. And when I host you, they will think I'm gay too. I can't do that. So look for somewhere else. <sighs> then it was getting worse still. I don't know anyone in Kampala. People who are there, they are also... So I got confused. The guys I knew, I knew it was too late to communicate to them. So I got confused. So I went on Facebook online. Ah, the guy from who I've been communicating to, ah, he did, he, I found him online. I communicated. I told him my problems, and he was like, "Okay, if you have money, board the bus and come." So. I boarded the bus. I went to Kenya, Nairobi. I reached there. I never knew anyone. The guy picked me, took me. But I found he only wanted to sleep with me. And because after that, he was like, he has no room for me. He can't stay with someone who is not working. And to work in Nairobi, you must be having a working permit. I never had documents. I don't have anything. But he's telling me I must be, he he can't stay with someone who's not working. And people will even keep asking. So he was like, you go around, you'll get, do sex work. You'll get some money. Go around, move around, make and connect to people who you sleep with and they pay you. So that was a new thing to me. Uh, I I just got like, I was like, now how can I do it? And I was like, sleeping with people. And I'm this kind of a person who is not into moving here, running here and there. I just am um, a relationship guy. But at times I did it because I had no option. Then he connected me to some organization guys who connected me to UNHCR. When I reached at UNHCR, they registered me as a, an, an LGBT refugee. I explained to why I've been there. Then I started life in Nairobi, Kenya as a refugee. They couldn't take me to camp because camp is full of homophobic people and they can't allow... The, the, living with LGBTI, they will definitely kill them. So I had to stay in Nairobi, where I've pe- faced a lot. I've faced attacks, homophobic attacks. I've been beaten. I've been harassed by people because the, everyone asks, what are you doing here? Why, why, in Uganda, there is no wall. So what are you doing here? You, your gays, seven will slaughter you. So... I've been attacked several times. I've been harassed by the police several times, beaten severely. I've been raped. 
have been used, have been blackmailed. People invite you, you think he will give you money, they end up stealing you, they end up beating you. So it has been a tough life, it has been so tough. At times you find you have nothing to eat, you end up going for sex work and you expect money there, no one will give you money. You end up walking long distances, end up stranded on streets, have been stranded on streets for some time. Because I have no option, I have no option, life is too hard, there is a lot of homophobia. I've been mistreated, I've been harassed, I've been tortured, I've been punished. My family already abandoned me. I'm here, homeless, I don't have parents, I don't have... I'm just like there, there. At times I feel of, I feel committing suicide. There is a time I did, I tried doing that, but a friend of mine rescued me, but I was tired. And I, at times I feel I'm so tired. Because you find you have nothing to eat, you don't have accommodation, you're just stranded on the street. You're just like there. You feel life is too hard. Life is too hard on me. Um, and end up like, let me commit suicide because I'm tired of this word. Who, what did I do? What did I do? Why, why should I live this kind of life? Because of who I am. That's me. If, because as times I sit down and I find if, if, if I'm in a wrong body, praise God. Because I I can't I can't have feelings for girls. I'm always like that. I always have feelings for boys, but I see why am I facing all this hate? Why am I being treated? Why am I being harassed? Why am I being tortured? Just of recent towards Christmas, I met homo. They bet me. They bet my lost my tooth my. My back, my backboard was injured. Even still now, I'm still facing the pain. My mouth is full of wounds. My backbone is very, very injured. I can't assess treatment because I can't work here. Working here, you must be having a working permit. And here, they know a refugee from Uganda is a gay person. So if you say Uganda, they would automatically know you're gay. So it's very tough, very tough, very tough. Police will also always harass me. Because they ask for documents when I give, hey, you're from Uganda, they automatically know you're gay. So that torture, what I've seen, it's very hard life that I'm living. It's still hard life that I'm living. So I'm expecting, they are promising to re the the. The UNHCR is prompted to reset to resettle me in USA for the end of this year, but life is still hard. Life is still too hard. There's a lot of passing through. You go indoors and sit and find the landlord wants to rent, you don't have that money to pay. So you decide to go street and on street you'll be in prison because they've been taken to prison for for good times, a lot of times. Because I'm I'm on street idle, I'm stranded, I have nowhere to go. They, they automatically arrest me. So it's very hard, it's very hard. People out there know that it's very hard, mostly for Ugandan refugees who run away, the LGBTI refugees who run off from Uganda. Those in Nairobi, it's very hard for us, very hard. Facing a lot, facing a lot. I've faced a lot of attacks because of my sexuality. And this is who I am. I'm not going to change. But, but because of what I'm going through, maybe I'll end up doing, I'll end up doing, I'll end up killing myself, committing suicide. Because I can't handle it. I've been patient for a long time. I've passed through a lot, but I, it hurts me. I feel my heart is so wounded of what I'm still going through because of my homosexuality. I reached a time of telling them, if they ask me, I tell them, I'm gay, if you're to kill me, kill me. Because I'm, but people out there pray for us. 
pray for me. Stand there for us because life is too hard. I, to this day, have not done an episode for this podcast or the Real Life Show, another podcast that I host, that has touched me more than Ronnie's story. This is a guy younger than me that has been through more things than I can possibly understand. The saddest thing about it, as I listen to him on the other end of the computer telling me his life story. While I would expect him to feel helpless, I was the one feeling helpless. What could I do for this man? How could I help him? I gotta believe that somewhere, that some force, some energy is in work here. And that me providing a platform for him to share his story is going to help him and help many others. So don't forget, people are hurting. (laughs) People are smiling. Take an opportunity to get to know other cultures, other people, other walks of life. Because people have stories to tell. And if we just listen, really listen, we'll hear them. to this episode today. I hope that you really enjoyed this story. I know it was hard and it could have made you cry or just pulled at your heart, but just know that there are people in Uganda like Ronnie that are leading efforts to speak up and be who they are. And it's dangerous for them to do that, but they don't care. They know that it's important. And I love that that because that's partly what LGBT stories is all about. So thank you so much for listening today, guys. Um, Remember, head over to ourlgbtstories.com, pick up some merchandise, donate to the show. And if you guys also would like to support us over on YouTube, we are currently migrating all the content here in podcast land over to YouTube. And we are working on some new projects over there. In the meantime, Um, That's a slow process, but it is coming along. Uh, What we need is 100 people to subscribe to the channel so that we can get an official uh, custom URL issued to us through YouTube. Right now, I have set up a shortened URL, which is um, bit.ly forward slash LGBT YouTube. Uh, That link will be posted in the show notes, so you guys can just click that and subscribe to our channel over on YouTube. Once we hit 100 subscribers and we're on our way there um, on YouTube, we will be able to create a custom URL, and that way it'll be much easier for everyone to find the show. And in the meantime, yeah, just be active. Join us on Facebook our private Facebook group. All of the links to our social media is going to be there. Our Instagram is um, currently being moved over to my personal Instagram page. There's, you know, as we're changing things up, we realize there's not much of a reason to have a whole separate one. So um, all of that's going to be at at kevingurtis.com. 
And uh, yes, things are changing, but hang in there with us because we have a lot coming up next year in 2020. New episodes will drop in February. As you know, every Monday until February, you guys are going to get some of the best episodes of LGBT stories that haven't been heard in years. And honestly, they're the foundation of this show. Thank you, Ronnie, for telling your show, uh, your your story to this show. And um, thank you all for listening. Please rate and subscribe to the show in iTunes. Follow us on YouTube and head over to Instagram at Kevin Gertis. All of those links in the show notes below. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. And remember, keep loving one another.